Hi, this is Ryan with HUSNG.com, and I'm back to review some more Hyper Turbo Play. Uh, this is at the $100 level now, and this is the same opponent from the last video, although we didn't really gain much information about this guy. So we'll go ahead and start here. King 2 offsuit is going to be good enough to play on your button. He just pushes it back to 80. Um, it's a small 3-bet size, but again, these are shorter stack sizes, so I'm, I'm okay with you just folding there. You know, a lot of times, you're going to be dominated by stronger kings. You know, hands like king-10, king-jack, king-queen, ace-king, uh, premium pairs are also going to be making those small 3-bets. And then, obviously, some of the stronger aces. So it's not really a great hand range to be up against. Uh, and I'm not too worried about you folding there. Three min raises you call a 6 4 opsuit. You know, it's a little light unless you feel like you can push them around a bit post flop. Um, it's slightly light, but at these fuller stack sizes for hyper turbos, it's not a bad call. I think uh, you might even want to call um, call by default, I guess you could say. Slight, it might be slightly better to call than to fold with a hand like that. 6 4 opsuit. See what on this board, um, I'd go ahead and peel as you did. Hopefully, he'll play pretty transparent here on the turn. Um, you know, he wasn't very aggressive, I don't think, in the last, in the last uh, match. So, I feel like he's probably going to play the turn fairly face up. Um, so, a lot of times you're going to have the better hand on the turn when he checks back. But going now with the river, the nine, it's not really a great card. Uh, some of those draws that might have checked back on the turn um, from a semi-passive player or a not aggressive player have now turned into a pair of nines or worse yet, a straight. Uh, so, this is a situation where I would just be check folding. Don't think a lot of players, especially ones we haven't seen a lot of aggression, um, from are going to decide to turn like an ace high or king high or queen high into a bluff here. So I think uh, you could pretty much rule out a lot of bluffs from him. Um, he may decide to bluff here once in a while, but I don't think he's going to bluff too much considering what we've seen from him. So he gets 80, and I would just fold in that situation. Um, and yeah, he had queen 8, so he had a draw on the flop, check back the draw on the turn, and then he made a strong hand on the river. His mid range here with the queens. And he sticks it in, so you're obviously going to call with queens. And ace 10 is pretty standard from his side of things. Uh, Alright, we'll double up and uh, we go on in this one. Pocket fours, I would just stick in against the raise from him. And he folds. Queen 5 suited, I go ahead and min raise if he stacks. And if he had made it like 80 with that, um, I'd probably call it Queen 5 suited. It's a bit better of a hand than the King 2 off suit in those 3 bet pots. Um, he limps there, 9 4 off suit, I just check back like he did there. And this is an interesting spot. Um, I definitely like a check. Uh, I would just check call. Yeah, I mean, if we were a little shorter, I'd consider check raising, but I think at about 20 big blinds, um, or a little less than 20 big blinds, I would just check call on the spot. Your hand's a little bit weak. There are some stronger hands out there. And here, um, yeah, I would call again. It's a difficult spot, but I think it's too good of a bluff card in the turn for the average player. The king just looks too good to bluff. Um, I would actually call. You know, it makes it really hard if he decides to bet a jack on a turn like that. If he bets like all his jacks and he bets the king um, and doesn't bluff otherwise, then obviously you're playing right into his strategy. Uh, but I don't think we can assume that. And it's just, I'd assume that the average player is going to probably be bluffing that king a decent amount at the hundreds. Um, so I would hang out for two streets. But I don't think the average player is going to fire three barrels too often here um, as a bluff. Usually you have some signs of a tilted opponent if they're going to three barrel bluff in these kind of spots at these buy-in levels. Um, it's the higher stakes guys I find are a lot more tricky and uh, capable of making three barrel bluffs consistently, not just when they're tilted or uh, 
when they just are just a random sign of aggression. They're actually a lot better at balancing their ranges. At the same time, it is a difficult spot. Um, you know, some draws have missed. You don't expect them to limp a hand like Queen Ten. You could expect them to limp like a monster type hand like Aces or Kings or something like that. That would play to this way. Um, some weaker kings might limp. I don't think you would be limping a hand like King Ten or King Jack or even maybe King Nine or King Eight. Um, you know, Jack Two could make some sense. King Two could make a little bit of sense. Um, nine Two hands like that. I'd almost lean towards a call to be honest. Uh, it seems like I'm talking myself into a call, but considering that a lot of the stronger hands play with three barrel, are probably going to raise pre flop. Um, this player got stacked a little bit ago. I kind of lean towards calling in this spot. Uh, we're only beating a bluff right here, and um, you know my first reaction is just to fold the third barrel. But just looking at the texture a little bit, I think he might be, you know, the texture and the game flow um, taking into account recent events. I lean a little bit more towards a call. I don't like the half half pot size bet um, because tilted opponents are usually going to bet a little bit larger. I'd say in general. Um, I don't think that's even that general. I think tilted opponents very often bet big when they're bluffing. Uh, bigger than half pot, so that's kind of a negative. I'd almost rather see like a 180 chip bet in this spot than, than that than 120. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go back again and just say fold. Sorry, um, to take into account the bet size on my analysis. So I'm back to fold. That's what I would do here. Uh, let's see what happens. Right, so he called and uh, he had king three. You know that hand makes sense. He was just c betting. You know c betting this board nearly 100% of the time is not really. Um, out of the ordinary for a lot of players. And then the king pops up in the turn, he hits top pair, and he played it, you know, pretty standard from there. Um, whether or not he would bluff like this, we don't really know, so, you know, honestly, we're not sure what the correct answer is. Um, but after seeing that half pop that size and taking into account all the analysis, I think uh, fold would be best on the river. But I do think the flop and the turn calls are appropriate. Eights here, I've just been I'll just dump this pre-flop. We're short. 4-3 offsuit's pretty weak at this, spot, at this point. Not that it's very strong at 25 big blinds, but um, it's much worse at like 12 big blinds. 12, 14, 15, that area. I think 8-6 offsuit's going to be okay for a min-raise. Um, I wouldn't mind limping either, because you can hit a lot of flops with a hand like 8-6 offsuit, and you notice this 3-bit percentage does seem a little high. Um, we don't have a massive sample or anything, so don't want to take it too... You know, you don't want to put too much weight into that information, but history of percentage is a little bit high, so I would consider limping a hand like 8-6 offsuit. Just because you're going to hit some pairs on a flop, you're going to hit some kind of uh, straight draws once in a while, it's a playable hand. Um, a lot of boards where you can see bet and stick it in if you have to. Um, a lot of boards where you can double barrel or you have a good chance of making a hand. Um, as the hand goes on, you have multiple ways of making hands. Middle pairs, uh, and like I said, the straights. So uh, for being a low card hand, I think it's a good hand to limp. Um, a lot better than limping a hand like 9-2 offsuit in this kind of spot. Although if he was weak enough post flop, I would probably be limping a lot of my weaker hands as long as he wasn't putting too much pressure on my uh, limps. But yeah, I would have limped 8-6 offsuit here. And he jams over your three bets, you're going to fold. Queen 9 I would raise here. Um, I think it's too strong of a hand against a limp, not to raise. We've seen it. We've seen him limping like king three offsuit. A lot of players are going to get too tricky without seeing a lot of aggression from you. Um, so they're not going to get too tricky with their monster hands. So you don't have to worry too much about ace queen limping in these kind of spots. Um, even a hand like ace nine. It's not like you've been folding a ton to his min raises or anything like that. I think. Um, so I really don't think he has any reason to decide not to do anything except open jam or min raise a lot of stronger hands at the stack size. So. The conclusion that uh, leads me to the conclusion that his limping range is pretty weak. And Queen Anne offsuit is a stronger hand than most of his limping range. So you can raise for value. You get some fold equity in there as well, but it's mostly a value raise. On this board, I think you can check raise. Um, he's shown that he'll bet on a board that's you know a wet board. He had King High. It was a Jack 9-2 suited board. Um, a few hands back. 
that big pot when you've had uh, 9-4. He's shown he'll bet on that with the bluff. Um, this is a much drier board. I think it misses his range a lot more even. Not as many draws out here. Um, obviously, he can have any of these pairs, so can you. But I think a lot of times he's going to miss, and the main thing is when he misses, he's going to be bluffing a lot, even with something like King High. So I would check raise in this spot. If he bets 30, I'd just make it like 80. Um, you know, I think that's plenty of big raise size to show him uh, at these stack sizes and show him the door if he's bluffing. If he bets 30, and I would just make it about 80. Flat call, you know I don't like the flat call as much because we know he's bluffing, he's betting on the flop, the wide range. So let's just take it down there. Uh, don't see a lot of advantage in calling, um, and trying to bluff later, and we can just pick it up there. We haven't seen enough turn or river tendencies out of him to know how often he's double or triple barreling, what kind of boards, uh, and really how to play in general. Here I would just check um, if he bets. I consider calling almost because. I don't expect him to bet, you know, okay, we see the hand, the king high there. Uh, I wouldn't expect him to bet like an ace high or king high, um, or even a queen high. If he's betting, I'd expect him to bet some kind of weaker hand. Uh, and I think he would have bet a lot of the strong hands on the turn. So I think a lot of times if he bets the river, he's probably bluffing, and you can kind of pick him off with a queen high. Uh, yeah, so I would just check raise the flop, and I doubt he would have sucked it over king 10. Note that uh, my assumption was a little bit wrong. King 10 is a pretty strong hand pre-flop. Decide to limp it at the stack size. So keep that, uh, take that into account in the future hands. It's good information. You can't too suited here. It's a pretty, pretty standard shove. Ace Jack, you obviously want to stick in no matter what he does here. So he's going to pick this one up. And we should have one more game left in this video. All right, new opponent. 8-6 offsuit. Uh, I'll play this out of position against the mid-raise. Uh, just check back against him. And nice to see an open pull. Always like to see your opponent open pull this button. Mid-raise there with 7-3 suited. It's a pretty standard raise. I think it's fine. You know, it's a weak hand, but you're in position. You're suited. And uh, you don't want to give up your button without a good reason. Usually your expectation is better to do something other than open fold. Um, here I would see about 30 into 80 spine. Makes it 170. Um, I would just get out of this hand. This is a board that's going to hit someone's range. Um, you know, unless he's a maniac, a lot of times it's going to hit his range uh, for a draw or some kind of pair. Um, obviously, plenty of kings are calling free flop and hands like queen 10, queen 9, you know, all sorts of hands like that are going to call. Um, you know, Jack should be check raising like this, but not out of the question. So I would just fold there like he did. Check six offsuit. I got some minerals I would fold against this guy. He's gonna make it four x. So right right away, you see this opponent seems kind of a little bit crazy. Uh, he made about a six x check raise because your C bet a minute ago, and now he's opening four x. So it's not really a sign of a typical. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not really normal. So, you know, be prepared for some crazy aggression, maybe some uh, some really, like, unbalanced strategies that you might have to counter. So just be prepared to go into some kind of crazy off-balance strategy yourself in order to beat this guy. Um, do things you might normally not do. A6 offsuit, the min race here is perfectly fine. And, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean he's crazy because he's making those raise sizes. Some people just don't know how to play certain hands, so they just play them with, like, overstated raises. You know, maybe he has pocket fours, green flop, and he doesn't really want to see you call it because there's not very good flops to pocket fours. He doesn't want to open jam because it's too deep, so he just makes it 4x on the button. And, you know, check raise, you can over check raise because he doesn't know what to do if he makes a small check raise and you call him. That's not terribly uncommon. It happens funny. You know, this is a $30 buy-in, and, you know, lock poker... Lock poker money is selling for like 20 cents in the dollar, so it's not. It's a site where there's going to be some uh, people doing some extra silly things because the value of the money is so low. Here in this limp pot, um, 
you know, I wouldn't even hate just stabbing out with like a mid bed or something. Just seeing if you can pick this spot up. Uh, then there's a chance that his limping range is really weak, and uh, this kind of board just scares him. He's gonna get out of town if you uh, mid bet, and you have no showdown value or anything like that, no equity in this pot. So I went, I wouldn't mind just a little kind of probing bet here on the flop. See what happens. Uh, might have some fold equity. Don't like a turn bet as much. Brings a heart up there. Second ace really doesn't make the board scary. He pots it down. Definitely get out. It's fine the way you played it. Um, I just like to kind of try to test the opponent where you can. You find out a lot about opponents, especially a guy like this who might be really uh, unbalanced. The quicker you find out information, the uh, more valuable it is. Min raise with aces, I think it's fine. Uh, he just folds the shame. Ace queen suited. Um, I'm going to try to raise the pot in some way if he plays his hand with the open folds. I don't like this board too much. I'd probably just check back and just leave it be. To hand in front when I'm bluffing, I kind of want to bluff with hands like, you know, 9 6. Um, you know, King of Diamonds, at least. Something like that. Something that has a chance if he calls. If he calls the flop, say he has like a 7 or 10 here, or even a draw, say he calls the flop, um, he's probably going to check the turn and you get to check back. So those hands like King of Diamonds, they can run a runner into something, um, or they can just, you know, hit a king. Runner, runner, new straight, or diamond flush. And you know, you'd rather have some equity in the pot or some chance to make up some value on the river if he calls your bluff rather than just a spot high hand. And it's not a great board otherwise, so I would just back out at this point. And then you pick it up anyway, so it folds there. Good some mid I would just fold with uh, 8 5 offsuit. Thing is, he's been open folding his button, so I think his raising range is a little tighter. Um, so I don't really like you calling with 8 5 offsuit. We're not that deep either. You know, we're only about 15 big lines deep, so it's not even full 25 stacks, uh, which is a little bit better with 8 5 offsuit. So against him, I would fold. Um, now that you flopped a little bit of equity, though, let's see what happens here. Ah, he pots the flop. You know, I really want to check raise on this flop. I don't know what to do about his pot size bet. It's a little, it throws me a little bit because we've seen some aggression from him in different areas. And we've also seen him open fold some of his buttons. So I don't think this is a flop that really hits his range a ton of the time. Uh, at the end of the day, though, I think your equity is probably a little bit too weak. We don't have enough solidified information to really make a play. Pot size bet, you know, it reads strong in general. So I would just fold here. Uh, it is really tempting just to jam in this situation. But I think we need a little bit more to go on in order to make that play. As a hand, I wouldn't mind limping against this guy. Uh, I don't think he's, you know, I think he's he's willing to give up a lot of pots, it seems like. He's certainly willing to give up a lot of his buttons. So I go ahead and limp here, and I think he might have enough fold equity to see betting on a lot of boards. See what happens from there. A min raise is fine too, but um, I kind of like a limp. See what happens with him. See how he responds. And uh, keep a manageable pot and just stab out. Ace 5, I would just jam against his 3x raise. I think it's a pretty standard jam too. And looks like he'll river you there, and that's the end of this video. That's a shame because it's kind of an interesting opponent. I wish you'd had like four or five matches against him so we could really begin to dig into some of the information um, that we see, make some adjustments, really see what kind of strategy we get going against him. But overall, I think in these two videos, you played pretty well. A few untimely bluffs, I would say, uh, but otherwise, I think you know you played play pretty well overall. Your ranges, especially pre flop ranges in general, are pretty good. Uh, but we can talk more about that. And if any viewers have any questions, about any of these hands, go ahead and post it. Have a good one.